I'm Dave Tobin. I've got a special guest today, Pierre Hidari, all the way from Florida. We're here in uh, upstate New York in the Finger Lakes, and we're going to talk about a couple of recent Mercedes sales, well, let's just say Mercedes auctions on Bring a Trailer, uh, not necessarily sales. We've each picked a car, and uh, we're going to talk about it. So, Pierre, what's your choice? I picked the 1956 Mercedes 300 SL Gullwing that recently no sale at 1.1 million dollars. This car was a barn find that had been parked since 1977 and was brought to market uh, by a person who is very familiar with the 300 SL uh, market itself and the 1.1 million dollar sale result was extremely surprising. So it was bid to 1.1 million but it, it was a no sale? That's correct. Okay. It wasn't available for anything near that either. You had to get to 1.3 apparently to buy it. So what else would you rather buy in a Gullwing for a million one or a million three? Well, are there other are there other options out there? I mean, obviously there are other options. Yeah, I think there were. Uh, the case that I think is the most relevant is uh, if you're looking for an original 300 SL. The only reason you were going to bid 1.1 million dollars to this car is because you wanted an original 300 SL, not a car that had been restored or had color changed or had fuzzy documentation. You could have you could have gone to Sweden a few months ago and registered in this auction to buy a uh, uh, 55 300 SL Gullwing that had been sort of left to nobody. The owner had died and he had no heirs and the Swedish government basically took over the cars and auctioned them off for 1.3 million. Right. The same exact car, a red 300 SL, was sold at RM's Fort Lauderdale auction, I believe, for almost 1.2 million dollars, and it was a running car. Uh, the car did have some ugly dye on the seats, but, you know, that's better than, better than, I think, the condition of this car. So, Dave, what about your pick? So, my pick is uh, sold the same actually the same day was on uh, end of the same day on bring a trailer and it was the early production 230 SL it was a 1963 230 SL manual transmission uh, in uh, Shawnee Kansas just outside of Kansas City that did sell for forty seven thousand two hundred and fifty dollars um, what, what makes an early 230 SL so special what well I, I don't know there's some unique things about the really early cars and the things that come to my mind real quick um, is instead of having a data tag with paint codes and body information on the inner fender on the driver's side, this car had its paint code on a little body tag like you've got on a 190 SL in the door jam. Um, where a body tag normally is on this car, it's just stamped, you know, the VIN number was stamped kind of in a big long line. Um, the spare tire in, you know, early cars is upright on the driver's side in the trunk, kind of sunken in the trunk as opposed to, you know, horizontally on the, um, the passenger side. This was also a Euro car, which is kind of fun. I think most early 230s were. Euro cars? Yeah. Okay. Um, but I, I like 230s in general. I think they're really underrated. and. These guys presented this car very well. I think they, they played up the early the earliness of it. I think it's car number 60. Uh, no, 57 is the chassis number. So Try finding that. <laughs> so it, it, And that's a fun story to tell when you're at a car show. People like to have a story to tell, and that's a good story. It, it doesn't make it any faster. It doesn't make it break any better, you know. It's still a drum brake car in the, in the back, and um, but... It's a manual transmission. It's got good-looking headlights, and it was just a pretty honest car. Um, and I thought I thought forty-seven thousand two fifty was a very strong number for it. I don't. Um, you don't think so? No, I don't. I think that it. I think that it sold on its own merits, because if you tried to buy that car somewhere, you know, if you if you tried to go out and buy a restoration project two thirty SL, what are you going to pay? Twenty grand, fifteen grand. Uh, or more, probably. Or more. Yeah. I mean, this is just this is just a nice driver 230, and I think that there are a lot of driver 230s in the high 30s, low 40s. They probably all need, you know, $5,000 worth of work. You could probably find 
five thousand dollars worth of work to do yeah this mechanical car. work but um, i mean i could find five thousand dollars worth of work to do on any car mechanically if i really <laughs> wanted to you know right um the 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 uh the the thing about this car that i think makes it worth every penny of its sale price is the fact that it really had not nobody had ever tried to restore it and the originality i mean originality has to start at, at some point in time, we need to acknowledge the fact that originality is commanding a premium in the market. Sure. You know, uh, if if this car, now let me ask you a question, Dave. If this car had been restored by some hot rod shop, let's say maybe like Gas Monkey Garage, and tried to restore it, you know, and, and sort of put in correct upholstery on it and change the paint so that it was like base clear and yellow zinc plated some parts and spray painted some others, what do you think it would have sold for? Well, it might depend where it was. If it was at Barrett Jackson, somebody no, might have no, no, paid, no. you know. Right here on Bat. I don't know. Um, I don't think it would have done as well. I think it would have no-sailed at like 35 because somebody would have said, Ugh, you know. And it would have had a lot of nasty comments about how did they, why did they ruin this car or whatever. Right. I mean, going through and looking at what other people had to say about it, I, I recognize that if one of my customers was interested in this car, let's pull up a picture of the engine, by the way. I, okay. I think if one of my customers was interested in it. And uh, by the way, you know, full disclosure, I did have a, a friend who was interested in the 300 SL, and that was why I looked so hard at it, because I felt that the car had certain qualities that might endear it to be a preservation quality car, but the truth was that the more you dug on that car, the more obvious it became that a full restoration of the car was needed. Whereas this car, I mean, if you if you really look at the at the engine, other than some ugly hose clamps, you can you can kind of tell that it's. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't make any sense to restore that car. I mean, I don't know why it would be crazy to do that. Right. But for me, on back to the 300 SL, yes. the thing that I found almost offensive about that <laughs> auction was the comment by the seller, something to the effect of, you know, people were talking about the price, you know, in five years, it's going to be worth this much. Sounds like oil futures, and, right? And therefore, <laughs> that's why it should be priced this way. Which is insane because you know it's it's 2018 today. That's when you're selling a car, and it doesn't matter what it's going to be worth in five years. You you know, do you ask today's price or do you ask the five year from now price? Right. Yeah, that's I, true. I, what I if just, I what if I went into the store and I said, Hey, can I can I buy this bottle of water for the price it's going to be in five years? Right. 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 <laughs> it would just, it just be stupid. It doesn't. It and doesn't it would be even sense. stupider if somebody tried to say, Well. You know, today this thing is a dollar, but if I hold on to it for five years, it's going to be a dollar twenty-five. So, uh, you know, I, I'd like to get a dollar twenty-five. How about you know the the water that Bill and I were trying to pick up at the corner store here? Right. It was listed as two dollars, but they actually wanted three dollars and twenty-four cents for two bottles of yeah. water. Right. And I was like, are they trying to price this thing out ten years ahead in Arizona? Yeah. <laughs> it's it's crazy. Uh, so, all right, those are our picks for uh, auctions ending last week. Let's run through here. Maybe we can find some that are currently for sale and, and uh, see what we think of those. Okay, great. <laughs>